Jesus. Oh, man, can you hear my voice out there? I want you to hear God's voice this morning. Listen to me. The heart of the Father this morning is that you would know him and love him for eternity. And you see, what I love about Jesus is that when you call upon the name of Jesus, he's right there for you today. So Jesus is here. And so while you shout, you go ahead and just give him praise for what he's already done in Jesus' name. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Oh, come on now. I am the resurrection and the life. I don't know why I'm going to say this, but I'll say it because he said to. Some of you just need to look behind you and say bye. You just need to let go what's been and you need to live to what is in Jesus' name. I shared a message coming into this year. It was somewhere in January. And I just felt like the Lord said, close the door. And I had someone come up and literally open and just slam this door because I'll tell you what, whether it's the story of Lot's wife in the Old Testament, come on now, or it's this moment where we begin to realize that if we just keep living in what was, we're going to miss out on what is. And so maybe today you came in and you've been distracted by what's been. The sin, the disease, the sickness, the hatred, the loneliness, the tiredness, the things that keep eating at your soul, the things that stop you honestly from having joy when the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so today I pray that your joy would be resurrected. I pray that the strength of heaven would literally be released upon your life today. But I want you to hear me because he's not a God that just points and goes like this. He's a God who deserves to be worshiped. And so some of you, I want you to hear me today, right? This is a participatory kind of faith. You've got to close the door to the things that were. Because you can't serve two gods. The Bible says, choose this day whom you will serve. And so some of you, when you walk in this place today, do you know what's humbling? It's that the same God who loved you when you were in your mother's womb is the same God who loves you today. He's not ashamed of you. As a matter of fact, he died for you. He's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. And I pray today, if you came in here hurting, angry, lonely, tired, broken, depressed, searching, wondering, I just want you to know that everything starts with surrender. The key to moving forward is giving God control. And so while we stand here and we sing these beautiful songs, I want you to hear me that worshiping God through music is only one of the acts of worship in your life. Are you with me this morning, church? You see, I could stand here and jump around. I could even, I, I don't know. I mean, I want to jump every day because I love Jesus so much. But man, there's a steadiness that I want to bring to this room right now. There is a determination that I want to look you in the face and say, is it your season or is it not? Because the Bible says, for such a time as this, you were placed on this earth. And so for you to sit here and wonder your purpose, for you to wonder why you don't have the passions the way you used to, for you to wonder what God really has for you, I want you to hear me say it, the will of the Father is here today for you. But you've got to come into agreement. You've got to come into agreement with the things of heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Because I'll tell you what, some of you, you don't understand, God's been celebrating for years. He's been celebrating because he saw this day as a victorious day for you. He saw this day as a moment that you would be resurrected. You see, resurrection wasn't just a moment in history. It was the central moment of history. I'm going to say that again. Resurrection wasn't just a moment of history. It was the central moment. It's when time shifted. Come on now. It's when eternity revealed. It's when the Holy Spirit, right, began a new work. And I want to read you the passage. Go ahead and be seated this morning. I want to pour into you through the word today. How many of you are excited that he is risen? Oh, come on now. I'm going to ask the other half of the room, how many of you are excited that he is risen? 
I want to praise him all the days of my life. And I just want to encourage you today, if it's your first time here today, welcome to Living Word Church. Y'all can put up the lights. Go ahead. Man, God is here. This is Jesus' day. And I just want to say it as simple as this, right? God loves you so much. He loves you so much. And we're here to celebrate him. If it's your first time, welcome today. My name is Pastor Nick. I'm the senior pastor here at Living Word Church, and we're just excited that you would join us. We had an outstandingly fun uh, 9 a.m. service. We've got you guys hanging out with us now, another service after this. And to be honest, we better get used to worship because we're going to be doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Come on, somebody. Some of you are like, what did he say? How long is this service going to go for? <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking about heaven. <laughs> Come on now. How many of you know God doesn't want you to be a stranger in heaven? Come on now. Come on, y'all supposed to be the awake service here. Y'all got, got to sleep an extra hour. How many of you know the Lord said, and David said it best, right? He said, I would have lost heart, I would have lost hope if I didn't know that I could see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I would have lost hope if I didn't know that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I say this to you today with all of the love of the world. You don't have to be without in Jesus' name. You can't keep on keeping on the way you were because God has a plan that's bigger than your eyes can see and your mind can perceive, but you have to come into handshake with the will of the Father in Jesus' name. And it starts today, right? We start with Resurrection Sunday. Why do we begin here? Because without this moment, there is no other moment. Come on. Death has its sting if he doesn't come out of that grave. Are you with me this morning? Now you see, the Bible tells me so clearly, right, that sanctification is the process of where the Holy Spirit comes into our life and sets us apart from our wicked ways. Yes, we were doomed from the beginning, but his hope is greater than anything we could ever cling to. And my challenge in this season is so many of us, right, all of us in this area, right, we went through the pandemic. We went through tough times. Some of you that are older and elder in age, you remember many, many seasons like this in your life. Come on now. But the truth is there's only one anchor. There's only one God, and his name is Jesus. We cannot work our way to heaven, my friends. We cannot earn our way to heaven. And I want to encourage you to the heart of God today. He loves you, and it's because of what he did that when you confess with your mouth, that when you truly believe in your heart that he is God, that is why you can say, I am saved by the blood of the lamb. That's why you can commune with him without shame. Now I hear you because I, I, I hear you today, and I want you, to, I want you to, to open your Bibles to Mark 16. Open your Bibles to me, Mark 16. We're going to go here today. We'll start in verse 1 together. When Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might come and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. And when the sun had risen, they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb for us? And looking, for they, looking up, they noticed that the stone had been rolled away. For it was extremely large, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right wearing a, ro a white robe, and they were amazed. But he said to them, do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who has been crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. You know what I love about God? Is that when we seek him, we find him. But when we go back to the places of old, he's just not there. He has risen. He's not there anymore. And now listen to me. This might be a very elementary, but it's very elementary to the healing of your life. Some of you, you've known Jesus a long time, but you've never forgiven yourself. Some of you have known Jesus for a long time and you've done things in your life that you're ashamed of or you've walked in a certain way or you've, you've just had things happen and you're like, Nick, you know, I'm glad other people forgave me, but to be honest, I've never forgiven myself. And I want you to hear me, right? God wants to live in you to the fullest. 
And that means that when you keep that unforgiveness, whether to yourself or others, you are missing out on God in Jesus' name. You're missing out on what God has in Jesus' name. And so I want to encourage you today. The things of heaven, the things of heaven are beautiful. The things of heaven are for you. But we must pursue the things of God to experience the things of God. Come on now. Right? That means we got to get a little uncomfortable. That means that we've got to understand that in community with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. John 11 says it this way. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. How many of you, how many of you, could somebody help them? Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Martha, Martha said it this way, right? Let me read it to you to refocus you. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. I'll ask you this. When somebody says, do you have faith, right? Do you actually believe? Do you believe these things, right? How many of you actually, you don't need to raise your hand, right? But how many of you would be honest enough to probably say, I doubt more than I believe? And it's important because I want you to hear me. She said it with sincerity. I know he will rise. And I want to instill this in you today because some of you, you're really loving God and then you're really just like, whoa, what am I doing? You're really loving God, and then the next minute you're like, what am I doing? And God's saying, I want you to have an anchor, and his name is Jesus. I want you to be the anchor, and I want him to be the anchor of your soul. That means that, not like an infant, right? You won't be tossed back and forth anymore in Jesus' name. And that's important to us in this season. Why? Because during the pandemic, many people ran from their faith. Come on now. Why? Things got rough, and that anchor wasn't holding. And I'll be honest with you, right? Some of us blame Jesus, and we don't realize that we're blaming something that was never there. You can't say you have a firm foundation, foundation and not allow God to build that firm foundation. You've got to be in a position where in Jesus' name you say, you know what, God, I'm going to surrender this season to you so that you could build in Jesus' name. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? That was a question. Church, do you believe this? Are you convinced that nothing can separate you from the love of God? And the reason I ask this is because if you are convinced, then you need to watch your faith grow as you stay convinced. Come on now. Because you can be convinced, right? There's a lot of people that get convinced to come to church today. Come on now, right? I mean, you know there's like a teenager in tow, right? Uh. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? Grandma said we're going, we're going, right? How many of you know that, right? But the truth is, right, just because we're in church doesn't mean we know Jesus. Just because we come to church doesn't mean we're a Christian. Church doesn't make us Christian. It means we attend church. No more than going to the supermarket doesn't make you a produce product. Doesn't make you the same bag of chips you buy. You can go to a place a long time and not understand the heart of the place. And so I want to encourage you. There's not this Jesus that when you come here, you get him, you leave him, and then you go about life. This Jesus wants to walk and talk with you all the days of your life. He wants to be your guide. He wants to be your comfort. He wants to be the one that when you truly look and you look at your husband with those eyes or you look at your wife with those eyes, like, I'm going to get you right? <laughs> you should keep talking like this. What are we doing here, right? Those moments. You know why three strands are not easily broken? Come on now. Do you know why? It's not because of you and your husband or you and your wife. It's because of what he can do. And if you don't believe me, go home and pray for your spouse. Come on, somebody. The key to healthy relationships is God being at the center. And when he's kept at the center, the anchor is firm. And I want to encourage you. 
your relationship with Christ is the same. If you want that anchor to be firm, you must commune with the Father in regularity. Oh, Pastor Nick, I know you want us to come back to church next week. I'd love for you to come back to church next week. It would be the joy of my heart to see everybody. But you know what I would prefer more than just you coming in this building? Is you falling in love with God so much that the first thing you do when you wake up is you just kind of kick off the covers and you just sit there and you go, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the breath in my lungs. Thank you, Jesus, for my beautiful family. Thank you, Jesus, for my life the way it is. Thank you, Jesus, for this roof over my head. Thank you, Jesus, that even though there's only $3 left, you are still there in Jesus' name. You are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Come on now. Come on. It's when we start to realize we can't do life without him, church. That's why brokenness leads people back to the cross. It's not that bad things have to happen for people to understand a good God. Hear me. It's just that from the beginning, we don't recognize our brokenness. We don't recognize how broken we are. We don't recognize that we have broken parents leading broken children. Come on now. Come on, me included. I'm not hating on you. Come on, right? I'm saved and sanctified and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not a perfect parent at all. Right? As a matter of fact, all you teenager parents can stop looking at me that way, okay? Saying, you'll be there. Right? <laughs> I got two girls. I think two people said it to me today. You'll be there. I'm like, mm-hmm, I will, and he will be there too. <laughs> he will, you hear me, big guy. He will be there too, right? <laughs> oh, he's that good, church. But you know what I also learned about him? Is that if the Trinity lives in community, so do I. And so where does church come in? Where does the body of Christ really come in in our lives? We celebrate a risen king. But Nick, I got to be honest, right? I've walked in more churches and I've been hurt by more people in churches than I have walking through the supermarket or hanging out in, in some of my kids' school stuff. Or I, I've been hurt by more church people than anybody else. I say, I understand. There are many people here who are with you. But here's the difference. Hurt people hurt people. And so our job is what Jesus said it was. He said, I came to heal the sick. And so what I want you to hear about me and what I want you to hear about what I'm sharing today is that Jesus came for the broken. And so when you come in church, you're going to find broken people because this is where they belong. I'm going to say it again. You're going to find broken people. You're going to find people, right, that are in situations and you're like, huh? Yes, Jesus loves them, sweetheart. Yes, Jesus loves them, sir. Yes, he loves them in their mess, by the way. And he loves them so much that while being mocked on the cross, he took, the, he took the sinner, he took the crook, he took the criminal and said, I will see you one day in paradise. Well, who gave him permission? He didn't get baptized. He wasn't a church member. Come on, somebody. Did he go to church his whole life? No, he knew Jesus. And so hear me, I want you to walk this out with me, right? Because yes, you're right. You want to love Jesus? Do you, you know, do we need the church buildings, right? In some sense, you want to throw it out for a second? Yes. For the eternal sake, we need Jesus. But if the Holy Spirit, Father God, and Son live in community, then we need to learn what it means to live in community as well. Which means that when, amen, go ahead and praise the Lord. Amen. Even if you're by yourself, I'm, I'll praise him with you. Come on. I, one person got that one today. I'm good. So why do I share it like this? Why am I being so blunt? I say it this way. I feel like for so long, church has been misunderstood because Jesus is misunderstood. And today's about Jesus. And so when we come in here, I want you to understand, you don't come to get, you come to give. That includes me. That includes every person up here. That includes everybody who, you don't, oh, that's not my favorite worship song. Too bad, we're not worshiping you. Put a request in next week. I'll see what the DJ can do. <laughs> I mean, come on now, right? You came to worship Jesus. And so when you come into the room, I want you to come expecting him to do something. But you see, I want you, and hear me, I'm, I'm going to begin to just kind of swing this around for you today with resurrection. 
When you begin to see full circle how the Lord is leading you back to his heart, you start to realize that for so many years we've misunderstood the things of God. That it's not we who get worshipped. It's not we who have to come a certain way. No, listen, the word says it as simple as this, and I'll read it to you in Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still, right? Now many of you are like, okay, come to attention. No, as a matter of fact, it reads it out even more simpler. This means, uh, the word be still in its original Hebrew language means to let go, to let go. So when you walk in here, right, you know what an act of worship is? Here, God, it's yours. Here, God. And not in arrogance, but you can try that. That works sometimes. We got a few Bible stories that just work on, you know, throwing things that way, okay? But honestly, the Bible says you will be judged by the condition of your, your heart. So when you come and you say, God, I don't know what to do with this anymore. I, I can't carry this weight on my life anymore. I can't keep feeling this anymore, God, right? When you keep doing this, right, the word is let go, is be still and know that he is God. You, just like Martha, have to have the confidence that he's going to rise. And here's the hard part. People let us down, and so our relationships are built on failure half the time. Our relationships, even in husbands and wives sometimes, right? How many times do we got to explain this to each other, right? How many times do we got to talk about this, right? The human broken element of relationships at time. Listen to me. You don't got to explain it to Jesus twice. He is the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is the redeemer of everything. He's waiting for you to do something. I promise you, you don't have to wait for him. His plans have been from the beginning. And when you come into alignment with his plan, the perfect will of God can happen. Why? Be still and know that I am God. Being still is not a call to inaction. It is a call to surrender. And that is where I want to challenge you this morning. Are you willing to surrender all to the living God today? Are you willing to give him everything and not just part? Are you willing to let him be the anchor of your soul are you willing to be in a place where you start to realize that inside of this moment, right, where he says, right, he has risen, he's not here, right? Some of you, and I used to say this a lot inside of church, some people come to church so long, right, they come and they sit in their same seat, and they look around, they're going, oh, look, didn't they just get here last week? What are they doing? And you start to see people in action. Come on now, somebody. And I encourage you that the hands and feet of Jesus require walking. They require talking. They require living. But most importantly, they require surrender. And if you believe this, right, I want you to understand it. And this is, this is how, how the, whole, the whole verse ends, right? I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. And at the end of the verse, it says, do you believe? Do you really believe in this? Because if you do, all things can happen according to the will of the Father. Read with me Romans chapter 8. This is so important to where we're going today. I pray today that when you leave here, you understand the impact of resurrection. Verse 9, Romans chapter 8. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Not because of righteous things you do. Come on now. But because of what he's already done. Please hear me. Theology 101 for you for five seconds. You cannot earn your way to heaven. You can't attend enough churches. You can't give enough money. You can't just keep saying things, shouting things, and declaring things. But the Bible says it simply. When you confess with your heart, with your mouth, and you believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Now, to be honest, some of us, as we, the longer we're in church, these words we get numb to. Oh, yeah, he saved me. No, 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 he saved me. Like, like, woo! <laughs> like, come on now, he saved me. Like, I can go back to that moment this past year, right, when I couldn't get out of my bed, and I said, God, I will because of you. Come on, where's your story today? I know you came with a story, and I want you to hear me. Don't be ashamed of your story. Your story is his story. When God interrupts your story, right, it becomes a redemptive testimony to the world. 
So don't be ashamed of where you've been. But praise his name and thank him for that. But live it out in Jesus. Do you know how many young people wouldn't step in the same pothole as you if you weren't so ashamed to tell your story? You think 20-something-year-olds don't know you were, you were addicted at one point? You know, 18-year-old kids, 15-year-old, they know us. Come on now. They see it all over Instagram and social media. They know the evil of this world. You know what they don't know? Is the Savior of the world. It is so easy for us to point out the dysfunctions of this world. You know what's harder? Is letting the light of Christ shine. But we could do it if we want to choose to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Do you truly believe that the same power, come on, verse 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Come on now, where does this go back to? But you are not in the flesh, but the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit, by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. How many of you are, are, you like aggressive, like being aggressive when you got to fix something? How many of you like to just take it, like, let's go, let's go. Anybody out there like that? No, we got a lot of, we got a lot of waking up to do. Okay, here we go. Okay. Lord, help me with this. Help me with this part of the message, please. I don't know how to say it more plainly, so I'm going to read it again and allow all of you cerebral people to sink this one in. For if you live according to the flesh, you will. We're going to participate together. You will great we're together but if by the spirit you put to there we go the deeds of the body you will live for our many of you as led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god if you keep living the way you are apart from god yes what do you mean yes yes all the stuff that's up here yes all the what ifs and doubts and wonders and yes because yes, you are subject to the authority of this world at this point. But if the Spirit is in you, then His authority shall lead you forward. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will put to death the things in your life that you can't kill. Stop trying to act like you're bigger than your addiction. Stop trying to act like you're bigger than your biggest fears. You're not. He is. The most humbling thing a counselor could ever tell you if you're dealing with anxiety is that you truly can't beat it. Come on, Pastor Nick. I thought you were going to encourage me this morning. It's not something you beat. Fear, anxiousness, is a release of the mind in certain ways, it is a reaction and sometimes a learned behavior. Walk with me. That because of the alarms that went off because of trauma in your life, you don't have the code to those trauma moments because some of them were very young for you. Some of them were in your adult ages, but these things keep playing in your mind and you can't stop these anxious alarms. And I need to introduce you to the one who turns them off. And his name is Jesus. Now hear me, I'm not minimizing this, right? I actually have a master's degree in counseling, so follow me for 10 seconds, okay? I truly believe that the key to winning the war in your mind is understanding your identity in Christ. Who am I to him allows me to stop worrying about who I am to everybody else. That person who hurt me when I was a kid, that moment that happened with my parents. That moment that happened with grandma and grandpa. That moment that happened in, in, in our family. That the, the, these things that keep replaying over and over again. I, I, but, but God, I, I didn't even allow these things. Yes, son and daughter, we know. But the Holy Spirit can heal you now. Now that you are old enough to understand how to control your life and your situation, the things that are out of control just need to be surrendered. 
And so now you get to choose and you just need to be still, worship team, come join me. You need to be still and know that he is God. And now hear me because we're going to walk this out together, right? We're going to be still, right? The word be still means to let go and to keep striving. Here's the problem. You're trying to fix yourself. Your way, with your thoughts, with the greatest 10-step help book you found on the, on, the, on the cornerstone of Barnes & Noble, right? Or the top 10 Amazon list or whatever it is, right? You keep trying and trying and listen to me. There is no fixing you. There's redeeming you. They're sanctifying you. They're seeing your life resurrected. You lose your life to find it. And I want to encourage you. On a day like today, we're making a lot of space for a lot of people. Between these services, we see a lot of different people come through. But I'll be honest with you. I've preached this for a few weeks now. And we've prepared for this day for months. This day is special because of Jesus. You know what also makes this day special? And if you were here the last few weeks, you'll know this. Is you. You, God knew you were coming today. And I want you to hear me say this. Contrary to popular belief, we will be back here next week again. <laughs> right here. If the Lord shall tarry, we will be right here at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And we'll wait upon the Lord for whatever he has for us in the community of God. I, my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. Please stop doing life alone. You were never meant to be alone. And as a matter of fact, if you continue to live life alone, you're going to realize how dangerous it is because you're just an easy target for the enemy. You look at every predator in our world. You study the predators and you realize, right, that these animals, they don't go after the packs. Come on now. They go after the one who just strays away. Why do you think Jesus left the 99 for the one? Come on, somebody. Preach this sermon as we close today. Why do you think he did? Because the 99 can stand up for the 99. But there was only one who could go get the one. I want you to know that in this room, I can sense it so clearly. There are Davids. Man, there are Ruths in this room. There are people in this room today that God's plan for your life is so big. There are things that you haven't even begun to scratch the surface on yet. God's going to use you mightily in this season, but you're going to need a community to support you. And if you don't have a community home for a church, do me a favor. Come hang out with us next week as we start our new series centered around the theme, Identity. We're going to talk about what it means to be a child of God. And we're going to talk about it from this understanding that when we truly realize who we are in Him, we can begin to discover what He has for us in life. We're going to stop people from taking their lives in Jesus' name. We're going to stop people from having eating disorders in Jesus' name. We're going to stop people by the power of the Holy Spirit from walking in depression and anxiety. Not by what we could do, but because of what he does. This place was meant to be a house, a healing, a house of healing for the sick. We've said this from day one when we got together. And so I encourage you, please do me a favor. Don't be, a, don't be afraid or ashamed yourself or to bring those who need to be healed. Don't be afraid to bring somebody to church. These doors are open to all who want to know the love of Jesus. And I say this because I just firmly believe it, and, and I'm going to give you this verse because I want you to hear how Jesus put it. John 1, 12. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Do me a favor, come back next week and join me as we start this journey in understanding who we are in Christ. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me this Resurrection Sunday? I want to share this with you as you go today, and I want to say it as simple as this. Thank you so much for coming to this Resurrection Sunday service. Each week we meet at 9 and 11. We have kids ministry at both. 
We have our youth ministry for our teenagers that meets at 11 every Sunday. They actually go into our building right in the back, our youth center. They have their own live service with worship and word uh, for teenagers. And so I encourage you, come back and see the fullness of what happens inside of this community next week. When you go out today, there's a few fun things for you. Uh, right outside today, we've got some coffee available for you. We've got some shirts uh, and merchandise there. We've got a photo booth, a free photo booth there, so you can take a nice Resurrection Sunday picture with your family. And lastly, if you've got kids downstairs, uh, when we pray to dismiss, do me a favor. Go grab them downstairs and head right out to the parking lot this way uh, on the grass and go and enjoy the egg hunt. I'm sure the kids will love all the candy that is inside or the prizes. You may not enjoy the candy later, uh, but they will in Jesus' name. Church, how many of you are excited about what Jesus is doing in your life? Come on and give them praise. I want to pray for you this morning, and I want to say two things. One, if you're watching online or you're here in person and you don't know Jesus Christ, the Bible puts it as simple as this. When you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. You shall begin your journey, your walk with him as a child of God. We have people up here today that are willing to pray with you. Please don't leave this place without taking that step of faith and believing that he is your God. Amen. If you're here today and you need prayer, right, you just want to pray with someone, right? Maybe it's just been a long year. Maybe it's been a while since you've been able just to have someone agree with you in the things of God. Come up and let everyone pray for you. Let somebody up here pray for you and agree that the will of God would happen in your life. Lastly, I cannot wait to see you next week. We're going to have a blast together pursuing God. For those of you that usually come, you'll know we've got a much longer time of worship. We enjoy just kind of letting the Spirit lead us and even in word. And so uh, when you come back, come back and enjoy the things of God. Can't wait to see you. Living Word Church, happy Resurrection Sunday. We love you all. Let's give God a praise as we worship this morning. Cow